Hi friends, in today's video I'm sharing my updated makeup routine for flawless skin on camera. And while I do my makeup, I'll be sharing 5 tips that help me feel more confident on camera. If you're interested, just keep watching. I'm starting on freshly cleaned and moisturized skin and then I'm going in with my first primer which is this sweat proof primer from One Size. I really like it because sometimes I get a little bit hot when I'm filming and this helps me to not have too much sweat coming through on my upper lip or around my nose area while I'm filming. And my first tip for feeling more confident on camera is usually when I'm getting ready to film and doing my makeup, I try to make my apartment as cool as possible. So I turn the AC up really, really high and that way I can cool my apartment off because especially in the summer when you're filming, you don't really want the sound of an air conditioner or a fan going off while you're filming. And so I try to make it really cold before I start filming so that once I start filming and I have to turn the AC off, it's still a little bit cooler. Because for me personally, I feel like if I'm nervous and it's hot and now I'm sweating, I'm gonna be even more nervous. So that's tip number one, just cool the area that you're filming in off before you start filming. And for that primer, you're supposed to just let it sit for a couple of minutes. So while I let that sit, I move on to my eyebrows. I really like this Refai eyebrow pencil. I feel like for filming, it's really nice to focus on your eyebrows because it helps to frame your face really well on camera. And I actually like to use a color that's not too dark because sometimes when you use a color that's really dark, it can come through as harsh on camera. So this is a little bit of a lighter brown than I might use when I'm not filming. Then I go in with this NYX brow gel just to keep things in place. And overall, I go for a soft brow look like my eyebrows, but better. It still looks like eyebrow hair and it doesn't look too harsh on camera, but it still looks a little bit more elevated and helps to frame my face better. Next, I'm going in with my second primer, which is this e.l.f. primer. I really like this primer because it has a lot of tackiness and I feel like it fills in my pores and it helps to make my makeup look really smooth when it goes on. And now it's time for my favorite part, blush. I just love blush, but especially for filming, I feel like it just makes you look a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more sun-kissed. Recently, I've been mixing this berry color and this orange color together and I think it looks so pretty on my skin tone in the summer. And as you can see, I'm applying blush first because I actually like to put it under my foundation. So I know it seems like a lot when I'm blending it out here, but it's gonna be under the foundation and you won't be able to see it as clearly. It'll just be a subtle hint of color coming through. Next, I'm going in with my base makeup products and I've been loving the Fenty Skin Tint Sticks. I actually have a little hack that I use in the summer. I feel like for especially women of color, it sometimes is hard to find your shades in the summer. So what I do is I just have a lighter color and a darker color and I feel like neither of them are exactly my skin tone, but I actually just use them to highlight and contour. So as you can see, I applied the lighter shade, which for me was shade 21, on the high points of my face and where I wanted to highlight. And then I'm just going in with a little bit of brightening concealer in the middle of my under eye and in the middle of those other high points just to highlight it a little bit more. And now I'm just blending that out with a fluffy concealer brush. I prefer a fluffy concealer brush for this as opposed to a foundation brush only because it's smaller so you can really get under your eyes and in the smaller areas where I applied the skin tint. And I love the coverage of this skin tint. I feel like it's the perfect amount of coverage for me. It still covers my blemishes, but it kind of has a your skin but better look. And I think for filming especially, it's nice to just have a lighter weight product that evens out your skin tone. Because sometimes when you have too much foundation on or a thicker foundation, it can come off as cakey under all the bright lights that you're filming on. Along the same lines as tip number one, tip number two is to make sure that you're comfy where you're sitting or standing to film. Again, you wanna make sure that you're as comfortable as possible. So part of that is temperature, but another part is just like where you're sitting. I actually have a really ugly like folding chair that I sit in to film, but it has really good back support and it's comfortable for me to sit in for a long time. But yeah, just make sure that your filming setup is a place that you feel comfortable sitting still in for like an hour or two hours or four hours if you're batch filming. So after I'm done blending 
rounding that out then I go in with shade 23 and this is a few shades darker than my skin tone right now and so I'm taking this angled uh, kind of stiff contour brush and just applying it to the points of my face that I would typically contour and I also like doing my foundation routine or base routine this way because that way I'm not using a bunch of products so instead of applying a foundation that's a skin tone and then putting on concealer and then putting on a cream contour I just do all of that step in one so it's less layers of makeup on my face and I feel like that also makes me a little bit more comfortable while I'm filming because I don't feel like I have a bunch of like caked up makeup on so I'm just applying this on my cheekbone around my hairline around my jawline just to chisel things out a bit and then I also apply it around my nose for a bit of contour. And when I use it on my nose, I also pull it up into the crease of my eye just to give a little bit of dimension there and to have a little base for my eyeshadow that I'm gonna do later. And after I've applied the darker shade, I just go in with a fluffy foundation brush and blend the lines between the lighter shade and the darker shade just to make sure everything looks seamless and flawless. I finished blending this out. Let me share tip number three, which is to just pretend like you're talking to a good friend. I feel like I'm talking to friends when I'm filming. Like I have my subscribers in mind and I feel like I'm talking directly to you guys when I'm looking at the camera. And if you're still early on in your YouTube journey or content creation journey and you don't know your audience yet or feel like you're like friends with people that watch your videos, then what I used to do is I would just pretend like I was talking to my best friend or I was talking to one of my friends that might watch the video at some point and it just makes me a lot more comfortable because then it really feels like I'm having a conversation and your friend probably will watch the video later on so it kind of makes it a little bit more personal and a little bit more relaxed. I decided to go in with a little bit more blush just because of a personal preference. I just wanted to look a little bit more flushed, so I applied some more on top. And after these steps, this is how the base looks. To me, it looks like my skin, but better. It looks really flawless, vibrant, dewy. So now it's time to set everything, and the first powder that I'm going in to set with is this Ultra Pink powder from one size. I use a powder puff to apply this underneath my eyes. And a little trick that I learned is when you dip the powder puff into the powder, just rub it on your hand a little bit to smooth the powder out so that it applies evenly and you get a little bit of the excess off. And then I'm just patting it into my under eye. And do you see how it instantly just gives this airbrushed effect? I love it so much. I feel like this is tied with blush as my favorite step in my makeup because I don't know, I just love how it looks and it looks great on camera. So I apply this ultra pink shade just to the high points of my face and then I go back in with the deep dark shade just to set around the other areas of my face that are a little bit dewy and as you can see like I don't really have to bake with this and there's not much excess to wipe off after because we're really only applying a little bit and the powder puff helps to really melt it into the skin. After this step, I definitely look airbrushed, but I want to tone down a little bit of the powderiness. So I just go in with some dewy setting spray and spray it all over my face. And this helps to melt the powder in a little bit more. The last step for my face makeup is I go in with this powder bronzer from Fenty Beauty in the shade Mocha Mommy. This is my favorite makeup product of all time. It just really makes you look like you just came back from the Caribbean. And I apply this to my cheekbones, the top of my forehead, the bottom of my chin, and across my nose a little bit. Now, I don't do eyeshadow every time I film. I actually was going out after I filmed this, so that's why I did a full eyeshadow look. And this is my go-to eyeshadow look when I'm filming. Going back to that Fenty Skin Tint shade in 23, and I take that same fluffy eyeshadow brush that I use to contour my nose, and I apply this color in the crease of my eye. I recently got this Morphe palette, and I really like the colors in here for a natural, soft eyeshadow look. I like to use this blushy flesh tone shade on my eyelids. I think when you have darker skin, if you want to use a lighter 
eyelid color for like a cut crease or just a really soft glam look. I personally think that it looks a little bit better if you use a nude that's on the pinkier side versus a nude that is pure like brown because sometimes I feel like it can end up looking a little ashy especially on camera so I opt for this pinky shade instead and I just take a flat eyeshadow brush that's kind of small and I pack it into my lid and one tip I have if you have hooded eyes like I do is I just bring it a little bit above where my natural eye fold is so that you can still see the eyeshadow when I open my eyes. And I like to pull this color into my inner corner a little bit. I know that sometimes people like to highlight the inner corner with a shimmer or sparkly color, but I actually really like how it looks when it's just a lighter matte shade. And then just to tie in that crease color in the lid color, I'm using this a little bit deeper brownish mauve color just to wipe back and forth in my crease. Okay, tip number four is to have notes in front of you of what you want to say. I like to just keep notes in front of me. I usually have it on my iPad. And don't be afraid to stop for a second, look at your notes, refocus yourself, and then talk again because you can just edit that out, you know, when you're editing the video afterwards. I definitely do that in all of my videos, and it just makes me a lot more relaxed and confident in what I'm saying. Again, I don't always wear eyeliner, but when I do, I just like to do a little baby wing in the outer corner and inner corner of my eye. I think it just makes such a difference in making your eyes pop, and I personally like using a dark brown shade rather than a black shade just because I think it looks a little bit softer, a little less harsh. And I use this NYX felt tip brow pen in espresso to do my baby wing. While I apply these lash trios, let's talk about the last tip, which is really just knowing that you don't have to get it perfect the first time. Know that when you're editing and in post-production, you can edit out stuff. So if you feel like you ramble or you don't make sense, or it takes you a couple of tries to get a sentence out, just know that it's fine. The recording is really just the rough draft. You do the final draft in post-production and you can still have a great video. For filming, I really like to have like a juicy nude pinky lip. So I lined my lips with this warm brown lip liner from Sephora. And then I went in on the center of my lips with that berry colored blush from Merit. And I topped it with a light pinky nude lip gloss. And I always like how this lip combo looks on camera. And that's the completed look this is kind of my go-to look for when i'm filming to just have flawless radiant skin and yeah i hope you enjoyed the makeup tutorial i hope you enjoyed the camera confidence tips i will see you in the next video and in the meantime don't forget to spend time creating bye